I'm going to be talking to you guys today about Wikipedia, and I'm going to be telling stories with Wikipedia. And you guys can hear me okay, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the first time I've done this talk, so I will be looking at my notes a little bit. That's okay with you guys. There's a remote. I want to warn you ahead of time, there will be text on the screen, but it's going to be too small for you to look at because it's, it's just there as a visual. I'm going to be telling stories with Wikipedia. I don't want you sitting there trying to read it. If you want to use your phones and take pictures of the pages that I'm putting up here, it might be better because then you can go back and look at some of the different things I'm, I'm explaining to you at, at your own leisure. So that would make more sense than trying to actually read what's up there. Um, I will, I'm warning you right now, I will try to recruit you. <laughs> so if you're not used to going to like timeshares or anything like that, it won't be quite that aggressive. It'll be maybe a little more, but I want you to understand how important this project is, as Adrian pointed out. Helping us is not just joining the group. There's a lot of things you can do that help our team, but are uh, not necessarily becoming a Wikipedia editor. So I'm going to be giving you a, a, like a brief overview of some of the people we've worked on Wikipedia pages for that are in the science field. And Jane was telling me just this the other day, we were walking along, uh, trying to avoid all the massive cracks in people on the sidewalk in LA. It's kind of scary here, but anyway, um, we were walking along and Jane was saying, you know, the, Hollywood is so centered on stars and movies and stuff like that. But in my mind and in Jane's mind, a lot of the stars that we think of are, are superheroes are actually those people you don't know the names of. And a lot of them come from science. And I'm going to be talking about those kind of people today. These are people who are underrepresented. If you probably won't have heard of them before, but in my mind, they're actually superstars. And I'm hoping to be able to purvey that to you whenever, by the time this is over, that you will have some um, emotional attachment to these people and we'll go look up their Wikipedia pages. So I'm going to do these quickly. Um, and the first one I'm going to talk about, again, you can take a picture of the slide so you can go back and look at it later, but you don't have, don't read it right now. I'm just going to give a brief overview. These are all Wikipedia pages that my team has worked on over the years. The first one we're going to talk about is Archie uh, Cochran. He may be somebody you've heard of. I don't know. Oops. Did I do something weird? I shouldn't do that. Oh, I got it. Never mind. No panic. It's okay. It's okay. We got this. This is Skeptic Camp. This isn't Cyclone, all right? So we can make mistakes. It's okay. So Archie Cochran, that is the first person I'm going to talk about. We wrote this page ages ago, and I'm going to just briefly mention him a little bit. He advocated for the use of randomized control trials. Believe it or not, we didn't have those until even before World War, World War II. Do you, some of the things you don't know. So Archie Cochran, his father was killed in World War I when he was about eight. His young brother died of tuberculosis. He, rely, he was from a wealthy family, but he had to rely on um, scholarships to attend some of the schools. And his sister and he suffered from this nervous uh, disorder, and I'm going to not pronounce it right. It's called porphyria, P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-I-A. Purple P. Ooh. And if you look it up, there is a Wikipedia page for it. It is a nervous system. It's not wasn't treatable in the uh, UK at the time, so he had to go to Germany to get information about, uh, get treatment. It's very painful for the body. So this man just soldiered through. Um, he went to Germany in 1931. You guys remembering what happened right, right after that? He joined the British Army in World War II. He was captured. He worked as a doctor in a prisoner of war camps where he discovered that much of medicine had no evidence to justify its use. Can you imagine? They just did stuff and hoped, I guess, that it would work or relied on antidotes or, or I don't know what else. But it, it, it dawned on him that this had to be um, something that we regulated. And it really, his 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 work later and his early research, his early life was tuberculosis. That was a horrible killer that we're probably, a lot of your family members um, have died from tuberculosis. And of course you don't know because they're not in your family and it's just like, oh, I had an uncle. Yeah. He could have been important in your life, but you didn't know that. Okay. So he wrote a lot about um, scientific controls. He wrote a book um, you can look it up on the Wikipedia page. And in his, in, somebody reviewed his book, 
And the NHS, which is, I guess, the British equivalent to the, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal over there in Britain. Somebody reviewed his book and they said the NHS failed to carry out trials or ignore the results that do not back up their preconceived ideas. Promoted, so this man promoted the scientific method. He worked on the first randomized trial of aspirin and vas vascular disease. And we know him now as the father of evidence-based medicine. So this man, Archie Cochran, you probably never heard of before, is one of the reasons why we are allowed to live now because the, the science that we're doing in medicine is actually controlled and has scientific basis and there's proof that the stuff you're getting works and uh, amazing person. So I'm gonna show you if this works right. Yes, I think it will. I'm gonna show you a brief video, it's no sound, it's just a real quick thing. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a cow in the dark, and it's a dark cow, it's very, very black. And it's in a it's in a total eclipse. Okay, <laughs> I think it works. Oh, will that work? No, that isn't it. Is it? I, I don't know. <laughs> Pretend the screen is moving. Okay, here we go. Button pushed. Button pushed. There we go. Here's a button. I see it. I push it. Push button. <laughs> okay. This is the Wikipedia page before GSOW was involved. And what you're seeing here, it's moving, so that's good is the Wikipedia page for Archie Crockerin before our team was involved. And just take a quick look, it's just a visual. You can see there's only so many citations there. Now, and red font is bad, we don't like red font. So here is the next, no, here it comes, it'll come up right now. Okay, here's after the gorilla skeptics were involved, the dirty mole rats. Here's afterwards, this is his Wikipedia page. No photo, because nobody's uploaded one for me. I hate it when they don't do that, but whatever. Here is the Wikipedia page now, and you can see it is quite full. All the information I gave you today was off of that Wikipedia page, so it's got a lot more content. What we try to do is we try to humanize the people, especially scientists who tend to look like they're kind of, you know, above everything. We want to make sure that they're humanized a lot. So you can see a huge difference in the Wikipedia page, uh, the, the way it's there. The next person I'm going to talk about briefly is Anton, Alton Lemon. Nobody's probably heard of this person. But it is important because this man was a social worker, uh, civil rights activist. He was in the US Army. He was a member of the ACLU and the a, uh, NAACP. He, he worked for the Department of Housing, the Department of Energy. He used the term ethical humanism. Uh, the FFRF, which is uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation, uh, gave him the award First Amendment Hero. He was the lead plaintiff in Lemon versus Kurtzman. You've heard of the Lemon Law, right? That's where it's coming from. So in 1971, uh, tax funds were paid to parochial schools. You, your, your tax dollars went right to a parochial school until this man got involved. So he was able to change it with this law, um, Lemon versus Kurtzman, and that's why our tax dollars don't directly go to parochial schools in the United States anymore. 30 years after the decision, he stated he was displeased at the erosion of separation of church and state. You guys may be aware of that a little bit. If you guys have been to PSYCON, and I highly encourage you to come to PSYCON, um, also we can, we can reason that Adrian's having up in Calgary that it's going to be happening May the 4th. May the 4th, May the 4th be with you. I won't be there because I wasn't invited. But <laughs> You're always I'm always welcome, but I could have this in the audience. But anyway, so... so um, uh, Eugenie Scott has been speaking about this and there's a really interesting lecture on and I'll show you in a second about Eugenie Scott so here we go, here's Alton, Alton's uh, Lemon's Wikipedia page before we got involved you guys know the drill it'll slowly pan through here and you'll be able to see this is the before I hope it's the before that looks pretty good it actually looks like the after let's see And it has 14 citations on there. So let's see if the after is, if I, make sure I got these not backwards. Thank you for joining. She says, I'm joining, I'm joining up. <laughs> oh, I think it's on the next slide. So that must have been the after, let's see. Here, okay, so I hope you were paying attention. Here's the, 
yes, I should. And you know, I got here and I thought, I'm going to have plenty of time to go over my slides and practice, but no, I'm in a house with these, these three other women and it's just, it's just constant talking and, and, and uh, uh, we just talk all the time. Oh, I think that this is the whole screen, pretty much. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the, the Wikipedia pages existed before. So here's, here's uh, Skeptical Inquirer, um, PsyCon. Skeptical Inquirer has not come out with the video of Eugenie Scott at PsyCon last year. So this is a, a screenshot of Rob Palmer. We all know the well-known skeptic. Um, he is interviewing Eugenie Scott. And Eugenie Scott, one of the best talks at PsyCon this last year was her talking about how the Lemon Law is starting to erode. And there's a, there's a lot of people who are ready and willing and ready to start creationism in the schools again, putting in uh, the Ten Commandments, prayer in school. It's really close to starting. Um, it, you'll start seeing it. It's happening all over the place now. So I check her out. Next one I want to talk about is Kendrick Frazier. He is, in fact, that's wonderful because the magazines that were brought for Skeptical Inquirer feature him. He's a dear friend, wonderful person, just a, one of the sweetest guys I ever met. He was a science writer. He was the editor of Skeptical Inquirer forever. Um, just genuinely nice guy. He died a year or so ago. It's, it's, it was a sad, sad, sad loss. He's written many, many books. He was decades at Skeptical Inquirer. So here is his Wikipedia page. Uh, this is what it looked like before. You can see how it has got these flags at the top. These are alerts saying somebody needs to clean this thing up. It's a mess. And you'll see as it goes through here. Oh, Ken Fraser. Yes. Ken Fraser. Yeah, Kendrick Fraser. It's not moving. Really moving. Why aren't you moving? Oh, here it goes. So you'll see it move. These are all like 30 seconds or so. And this is what it looked like before GSOW was involved. <laughs> That's it. It moved. Um, <laughs> not much there. Okay. And then when my team members will take it on and they will go through the, all our training is um, set up so that we practically hold your hand going through this, uh, the training. And you can see what it looks like now. It has audio to have his voice in there. And it goes down. Awards, books. Notes, citations, now we're at 26 citations. Okay, so that is Kendrick Frazier. Um, Do you get pushback on ones like that? No, we, we almost never get pushback. There's a little bit here and there. Okay, so this one is Adrian's. Uh, Adrian didn't know this slide was going to be here, did she? This is, this is uh, Lady Ganja, Ganga. Her name is, real name is Michelle Baldwin. She was the daughter of Kendrick Frazier, I just showed you. You haven't heard of her. She, was, she quit college to be a kayak instructor, river guide. Uh, she wanted to be do river guides on the Rio Grande. She followed her passion. So she was one of these people who, this is what I want to do with my life. But she, because she was a kayak person and so on, and you know, live in the United States, she didn't have medical insurance. So she kept putting off her um, screenings and things. So she ended up finally eventually getting... Uh, going and getting a cervical screening. And she only did this after she started bleeding. So she found out she had stage four cervical cancer. It was quite awful. So three months, three to six months before she died, which is the time they said, you've got about three months or so to live. She said, here's what I want to do. She learned how to stand up paddleboard. That's what she decided she wanted to learn how to do. She loved the water. So her and her mother went to the... Ganji River in India. And they brought a friend who's a documentarian. And they filmed everything. And what they did is she spent, um, in India, she spent um, days on a paddleboard, sometimes 11 hours a day on the stand-up paddleboard. And she's being filmed. And as she went through the different towns, she went all the way down the river, she, the people would come out, the village people, and she would explain to them about cervical cancer and about screenings and, and health and so on. So um, uh, Michelle, Lady Ganja, she's, she's the better one, I think, than the Lady, Ganja, uh, Lady uh, Gaga. So anyway, so this is a really interesting Wikipedia page. Ken Frazier did not tell me to write. He didn't even mention it to me. I stumbled across a doc the documentary on her. One of the things they did is they took the documentary that they filmed, and then they screened it in India. And I guess another CNN or somebody followed that. And they, then they took in women 
from these poor villages and they bust them into a place where they could get screened for cervical cancer. And one woman there, turns out she was in the early stages of cervical cancer. And so they saved her life because she would never have ever have gotten treatment at all. And she had a young son and it was very emotional and it was just really incredible. So I asked, um, I stumbled across that documentary and I reached out to Adrian and I said, you're the person to take this on. And she wrote this page and you cried through a good part, portion of the it's such an emotional thing. She was a Buddhist. This woman was a Buddhist, and when she died, she was um, she was uh, uh, her body was laid out and burned on a, a hill in, in Colorado. They arranged for that. It's an incredible, inspiring story of one of these people who saves lives, but you would never have heard of her. So this is should be her Wikipedia page, if I did this right. Um, this is what it looks like. And it's beautiful. We, no, we don't get any pushback for anything like this. We'd like to find inspiring stories to tell, especially in the science and the scientific skepticism world. It's, it's um, um, you know, telling her story with respect, with photographs and images is really important. And you can see her paddle boarding. And she was very close to death when she was doing this. And hours and hours and hours a day. And it was... It was um, Something she really was inspired to do. And you can see lots of citations. And after we wrote it, then we reached out to Ken and his wife and uh, Ruth and told them what we did. And they were just like, oh my God, I can't believe you did this. This is so amazing. You did this um, for our daughter's history. Yeah, Wendy? When, um, how do you find the citations? We can't write a Wikipedia page without citations. Well, Google search. It would there's a picture of her and, and some of the women and some of the people walking in. I'll show you when you get your training started, Wendy. <laughs> okay, I'm about halfway through, so I think I'm okay on time. I have, like I said, I hadn't timed this. Okay, this next. Mm -hmm. So this next person is Kressel Eastman. Again, somebody you've never heard of before. He's a clinical professor of medicine at Sydney University and Medical School. Uh, public Health Projects Elimination Iodine Deficiency. We were talking about iodine yesterday at lunch. And I said, that'll become, uh, that'll become something important afterwards. So what this man had uh, just learned is that in lots of the world, iodine is not a part of the uh, diet, regular diet of people. And it's very important to have iodine um, in for people who are pregnant. And iodine, not having iodine in the development of a baby is going to have the child have learning problems. It's like, like lead pipe kind of stuff, you know, having lead ingested in your body. It's very dangerous. It brings down the, the, the learning uh, abilities of children. It's, it, and in undeveloped worlds, parts of the world, you know, or areas of the world that are not have the, the health care that some places do, this is a big deal. So this man travels all over the world. He goes and he speaks to people and he, and he advocates for iodine. And um, he says that the average person only needs a teaspoon of iodine over their life. But during pregnancy, it's very important that you have to get it, especially when you're lactating and, and um, so on. So this man has been called the man who saved a million brains. So you've never heard of Cresswell Eastwood. This is a Wikipedia page that did not exist until my team member got active and said, I have, I have many Australians that are on our team because um, I'm on the Skeptic Zone, that, which is an Australian podcast. I'm in there, and I've been asked to speak multiple times in Australia and New Zealand. So a lot of my editors come from there. Outside of the United States, most of my editors are Australian. So we got a lot of Australian pages we've done work on. This guy was extremely notable. Nobody had ever written a Wikipedia page until one of my editors who focuses on Australian sci scientists wrote this Wikipedia page for him. You can see lots of photos. Here he is interacting with children all over the world, Vietnam, um, uh, Aboriginal children, all kinds of places. You, you, you wouldn't even believe where this man has been able to do. This is all recent. I believe this man is still alive. So you can see down here the citations. Lots of citations existed, but nobody wrote the Wikipedia page. Nobody's in charge of Wikipedia, by the way, or very few people. And I am not running Wikipedia, contrary to what the UFO world seems to think. Um, I am not, um, but um, look at this guy. I'm over. <laughs> I'm busy approving edits right now. <laughs> okay. So look at this guy. He didn't have a Wikipedia page. I'm amazed at the people who don't have Wikipedia pages. It's incredible. All right. So 
So Stanley Plotkin, I've talked about years ago. He's wonderful. This man is still alive. Um, uh, the pandemic really, before the pandemic, we didn't know about him. I don't know, everybody know who Paul Offit is? Very famous uh, man in our community who became way more famous. And gosh, the hate I get, mm -hmm. this guy has to have bodyguards with him because he is in so much hate. People, um, Paul Offit uh, was with, uh, served on a lot of the committees that... Um, Somebody tell me his name, that we learned the name of the guy who's in charge of our vaccines. What's his name? Fauci. Fauci, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Fauci. He's on the, this guy helps, uh, Paul Offit helps decide what, what fa uh, vaccines we're going to be getting with the flu each year and, and all that stuff. And he's instrumental. So Paul Offit is a wonderful science writer. And he was very actively promoting Stanley Plotkin, who's a dear friend of his, and um, like trained him. So Stanley Plotkin... Um, has, um, I, I'm just going to throw out there, anybody here have anybody who's died of rubella, you know, German measles? Know anybody affected by German measles? Okay. How about rabies? Rotavirus? No? There's a good reason why you guys have had no effect with that is because Stanley Plotkin is instrumental in developing the rabies vaccine, rotavirus vaccine, uh, German measles. That's part of the reason why we don't have those epidemics anymore. I think we're all old enough that we've grown up when nobody questioned vaccines. When they said, get a vaccine, you've got your vaccine. Until we got social media. And I grew up in Florida. You couldn't go to school until you got your vaccine. Right. And so it kind of eradicated it. But because of people like uh, Stanley Plotkin, um, he is also instrumental in developing vaccines that fight pneumonia, mononucleosis. That was a big deal. Um, another one called CMV that I'm not going to even try to pronounce it leads leads to deafness and and walking difficulties in people with babies you know that they have to give it to them young. Plotkin wanted to go into the Air Force. This is the thing. He wanted to learn to fly, but instead he decided to get into epidemi epidemiology and virology, and we're we you know we're better for it. Um, he saved millions of lives, and we don't even know it because he saved these lives, and we're, we're not aware of it. I mean, how would we know? We just we don't know that person who could be sitting at that table right there, or the, or whatever. Um, at the age of seventy-four, I love this. We have this on the Wikipedia page. At the age of seventy-four, he learned to fly a plane. <laughs> He's I'm gonna learn this. He's about ninety years old now. When we told Paul Offit that we had written the Wikipedia page for. Um, Stanley Plotkin, he reached out to Plotkin and, and, and Stanley responded. He said that as I approach the end of my career, it's nice to know I did something useful. He told, he told us that. And so here's the Wikipedia page before. This is the Wikipedia page as it existed before my team uh, wrote it. It's almost a non-scroller. In other words, you don't need to scroll. It's all there. And then after my team member got, and we write in languages outside of English. So 45% of all the work we do is in languages outside of English. And we've written this in Polish and, and multiple different other Wikipedia languages um, translated it. So you can see now he has a much more respectable Wikipedia page. The respect this man uh, uh, definitely deserves. And I'm almost done, so hang in there. Wait, 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 you're not done yet. No, I know I'm not done. Um, I just wanted to mention that this past week, there was an article in the New York Times about measles. Mm -hmm. I, I know I made a joke about measles, but here's the um, um, the relevant part was that they quoted um, Dr. Offit, and the, and uh, and the, and it was talking about how getting vaccinate vaccination it almost the, it's not a hundred percent, but it almost makes it impossible to catch measles. Well, yeah, it's a highly contagious disease. You don't even have to be in the room. It could be three hours somebody had measles and, and it's still hanging out there. It's horrible. Um, I have measles. They suck. Yeah, but you lived. I lived. Yeah, so, I'm not so yeah, you're, yeah, you weren't, you're not sterile. Uh, maybe now. Okay, but... Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nothing personal or anything, but uh, I doubt you're going to get pregnant this week. Okay, so this is almost the last one. This one is for Ross. Uh, this is a non-scientist. He has touched many of the people in this room, and you don't probably aren't even aware that, that, that he touched you. He's written over 100 children's books on many topics, on science, history, government, ghosts, UFOs, cryptids. And on Facebook, I asked people, I said, 
because Brian Dunning had, had been saying um, the stories, children's books, that brought us to science, those passions that we had as children growing up that we got those scholarship, um, the scholastic books, and he wrote a lot of those. And they were, they, you don't realize it until now as an adult to go back and look. He says, these are stories about hauntings and ghosts. Aren't they fun? They're not real, but they're fun. Let me tell you the story. And he gives you a creepy way of doing it. So anyway, so I asked on Facebook if anybody had been inspired by books as children. And Ross had responded. And he put pictures up of a lot of the books. And there were Daniel Cullen's um, books. So, and I went through and I was like, I've got a whole bunch of these too. They're all over our, our libraries. So he brought people to science by inspiring them to, to do that. What you don't know is that in 1988, his only child, Theodora, who was only 20, was on a plane over Lockerbie, Scotland, when a bomb assassinated 269 people. She was on that plane and she fell to her death. She might, her and her has her, so uh, Daniel, who had given so much to people, his wife was uh, Susan Cohen, what an awesome name, but um, Susan, um, she worked for CNN at the time, and they, they took over their life. She said, this is not only the worst day of my life, it was the last day of my life, is the death of her daughter. They advocated a lot for um, what happened in Libya and getting the settlements. It's really, really, really involved. You can read the Wikipedia page if you want more information. But this man inspired so many of us. And here's the Wikipedia page before. Isn't that embarrassing? Look at this really important man to inspire so many people. And then if you look at this, this is pretty much it. It's really embarrassing. So this is the Wikipedia page. Now, the people who rewrite these Wikipedia pages a lot of times are beginners. These are people that I teach their training. When they go through training, to finish my training, which is about four months, it happens over Facebook and Google Docs. I do all, my, I do all the training. When, it, when we're done, they have to rewrite a Wikipedia page. So this is one of those pages that was rewritten by one of the trainees. And, and you'll see it right now. So here it comes. We like to focus on biographies. They're really interesting to do. And, and it talks about the Pan Am Flight 103 that um, fell over, uh, blew up over Lockerbie. She was assassinated. And this is a much better page. I think that's my last one. Let me see. Oh, here's the, here's the article I wrote about it and that I was talking about with Ross. And Ross is quoted, Ross, you're quoted in this article. And this talks about a lot of the books he wrote and how they inspired a lot of us. So I'm going to, I'm about at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some numbers really quick. So not everybody could be in my GSOW project. It's not for everybody. I own you once you're, you uh, work, and a lot of people aren't into that. So, um, uh, <laughs> well, it is a very intense training. It's not hard. It's just... It's like taking a cooking class or something. You, you, there's process. You got, when, you, when you finish with us, you are an awesome Wikipedia editor. You, you are in a cabal. We put you in a secret cabal. You have full community. Everybody hates you, except for maybe the people in this room. Um, it's, and the scientists and, and some people like that. But you have to be a self-starter. You have to be very comfortable with Facebook and not just open an account. You have to be active because our whole team is actively communicating on Facebook in a private group that nobody can get into. We use a lot of Google Docs. You have to have the time to train because it takes about four months. Um, it, it, I teach you a lot. Um, I need people who, but outside of becoming one of my Wikipedia editors, a lot of Wikipedia pages are missing images. Uh, we need audio. Um, I mean, some of these pages that I, I was just talking to Dave today about the Magic Castle. I wrote the Magic Castle's Wikipedia page and several people in it. I am having nothing but trouble getting pictures uploaded. It's such a pain in the ass because we can't just take a photo from the internet. We have to have it uploaded. So I am a, I'm asking for you also, if you know of places I can give talks to, to, to help influence people to join, especially if they're in the science world. I really need people to help me get into the science world. We're real, well known in the skeptic world, but the science world, I need people to be able to um, uh, speak to audiences that are scientists or science ac advocates so that I can get them to train with me. So um, I'm always looking for articles. I'm always looking for lots of things. There's so much information. So this is the last screen that I'm going to show you. This is... Um, got a number sign on here because I'm able to track all the work that I do. 
And I'm only able to track that because of um, Kyle Polish, who's the data skeptic, who was living here for very long. He's given lots of talks for us. He created the system where I can upload all my data into a database where I am able to access it. And I only keep in there the pages we've written completely or completely or rewritten. Not just the little fiddly stuff we do every day, which is constantly. We, we are able to track those pages. And we've written 2,214 as of this morning. 2,000... 214 Wikipedia page. That's a freaking amazing. I can't, I am shocked that anybody does follow me and, and like listens to me. I'm, I'm a baby photographer by trade. Um, and 45% of the work we do are in languages outside of English. And because we like numbers, right? So just tracking those 2,214 pages, just that. You guys were sitting down? Well, everybody but Steven's sitting down. So those 2,214 Wikipedia pages, and you saw Adrian's number. She's got how much in total? It was 2.7 million. Oh, 1.7 million. 1.7 million. 1.7 million just for the four pages on ghost photography and stuff she's done. We've written um, about a... We've written about 100 pages on virology associated with the anti-vax community. Oh my gosh, you guys. And those are over a million views. So as of this morning, I just checked, we're at 162,595,809 views of those Wikipedia pages. Just 2,000 pages we've written. So it has a huge impact. And not just, yeah, my team is amazing. And not just for the individuals who are going there, but a lot of bloggers, the media, the government, lots of people use Wikipedia all the time and then they put their content into the Wikipedia article, I mean, into the article they're writing and then it's disseminated further. Podcasters, the news. So what we write, we can find, is being used in articles all the time. They're totally plagiarizing us. We're, that's fine, that's what we want. We want them to get good information, but a lot of kids all over the world are plagiarizing our information right now for their school projects. <laughs> And we're okay with that because we want them to get the best information possible. So um, if you do want to, uh, helping students since 2010. So here is a lot of our information is on my About Time project. I am in my fingers in a lot of pies. Thank you. Yes, I'm on time. Um, if you guys want to check out the About Time project.org, I'm not seeing photos being taken of my screen for some reason. I don't know why. But I would hopefully you'll visit the Wikipedia pages and you will visit our website and get more information from us. And with that, I'm on time. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.